No, and I'm going to say the ball of the court when I really would like the weight distribution a little bit more to the front of the ball of the court. More kind of where the toes just meet the foot. Because having it that little bit more in front allows you to drop into more ankle flexion, which gets your weight down into your heels more. Whereas if you have the stirrup iron where everyone kind of teaches you to pony club right on the ball of the foot, you use the stirrup iron more as a balance tool and you kind of can't get the ankle down and you pop your weight up and out. Does that make sense? And then thinking a little bit there where your weight is on your seat bones, I want you to find the middle of my seat bone, draw my belly button a little bit and towards my spine can I flatten my back slightly. And then by changing a little bit of the alignment with that foot position, that's going to help change the stacking alignment of where your lower leg hangs underneath your head. Can I draw my shoulder blades down towards my opposite back pocket? There we go. And then at the same time that I do that though, I don't give my core and arch my lower back. So I'm always thinking a little bit belly towards my spine. Flatten my low back, a little touch with both legs there, send them in front of you. So careful that when you go to touch them with both legs, you don't pull your legs backwards. Right, so just tip, touch them at the side, really short and sharp directly underneath you. Yeah. Because the minute I go to pull my leg back, either I'm bending my knee too much to do it, and then I change where my balance is, and I normally am going to drop my weight too far forwards. So what we were doing with the lower abs on the table is exactly what I want you to do in your half halt on the horse. So if he goes to jog or goes to run away for you from you and gets too quick and you want to bring him back, first point of call is going to be can I get in and do that little ab activation that I just did. Let's remember two phases, belly button into spine, press out against my fingertips. Shoulder blades back and down to your opposite back pocket. And then when you're ready, you're going to turn it. Yeah, I think lift your heart a little bit up towards the sun, but belly button stays drawn in, good girl, nice thing. to the right for your turn. There you go. Right? Which allows him to develop and bend through his ribcage. Now remember about weight distribution into the stirrup iron and where we want the foot to be with that. Go relax your forearms, shoulder blades down and back. If it gets quick there, use your abs, low abs, half halt, bend your ribcage to the left, right? If we want him to bend and wrap round to the left, 
you have to be able to mobilize your rib cage leg. Without leaning, right? No riding a motorbike around the corner. So think a little bit there, right shoulder down. A little bit more weight down into my right leg. Yeah, and then press them off my left leg into my right rein. Open my ribs to the left. Right seat bone down though, no leaning. Good girl, better, good save, good correction. Open your rib cage. Good job. Good, I really like that. Super. Let's write it down. 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 Your forearms, legs down and long, legs underneath you. Remember that little A from your leg is going to be just quick where it is at your side. Exactly. But it doesn't flex at the knee and then leg comes flying back. Circle here. Rib cage left. Yeah, I've got some off the left leg. So you can leave your little foot out. I know these ones are kind of tricky because I don't hook over your ear. Think about where your foot is in the iron again and where your weight transfer is. Circle down here and let's pick up pants to the left. Right shoulder down, right seat bone in the saddle. All that connection down through the right side that he's mobilizing for his rib cage to the left there without you leaning. Yeah. Follow it up with your left leg. And push and count. Yes, we go. Now yeah, relax your forearms. Let your forearms follow the motion of his neck a little bit in the counter. Have your leg there really quick to pick him up. Great if you can it now. Go a little quick off your leg. Quick. You saw that one coming. <laughs> Stay back in your body, open your lips, and again, can it and go. And quick, quick, relax your arms, relax your arms. Yeah, you allow a little more mobility in your forearms. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> leg on, leg on, leg on, leg on. <laughs> go, and again, shut, and go, and go, and go, and leg, and leg. Yes. Yeah, but you can shut up your leg on. Good, leg again, leg, leg. Yeah, double time on the feet too. Yes, well, good. Anyway, um, then we give him the benefit of the doubt, right? Then we sit a little quiet until he falls behind you again, and then we're going to double time that leg again. Now, Baby horse. <laughs> and can away. Leg quick, 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 kick him. Yes. Relax like your forearms. Put your hands on you together. Right, double time your leg. Go, go. You got it. Yeah, now sit quiet and open your ribs a little to the left. Until you feel them just start to lull off and then quick with your leg again and say, hey, no, I said stay. Exactly. Don't pull back at the same time. Though. I said stay here. This is where you need to own your ca own cannon. You carry me. Relax your forearms. Good girl. Then on your time, double time, double time. Nope. Go. Cannon straight away. Again. Double time. Touch him with a whip. Once you have the cannon, on your time, you're going to bring him back and we're going to change the ring. Remember to bring them back from your abs. Good job. Good and change your own. Relax your forearm. Good diaphragm. Good there. Good girl. 